Hello again everyone and welcome back to DIY The Art of Wood. I'm Jeremy. Today we're going to be fixing a very common household electrical problem. It's more common on older houses but you may find it on newer houses as well. And that's this here, electrical outlet. Now I know you've seen one of these before but one of the common things that happens with these is over time they tend to get worn out from use. And what happens is when you go to plug something into it, the plug doesn't really stay in there very well. It tends to just kind of halfway fall out. And what happens is the little springs inside the receptacle here that hold the plug in place, they just kind of get worn out and lose their, well, their springiness or their grab. And what that can create is a couple situations. So you go to plug something in here and it kind of half hangs out. And you've got you know, a portion of the plug exposed here, which you know, could actually be dangerous because you've got a potential situation here where if something were to lay across this that's, that can conduct, you could have an electrical arc right here, start a fire, damage your equipment. It's just not a good scene. And what you'll see some people do sometimes is they'll either take the plug on whatever they're plugging in and squeeze the tabs or spread them apart so it kind of holds a little bit better. But let me stop you right there. You don't want to do that either. That could damage your plug, that could damage your cord. And it doesn't really fix the problem. And what you need to do instead is actually fix the problem and replace the outlet. And today I'm going to show you how to do that quickly, easily, and safely. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is verify if this outlet is actually wired correctly. Now the easiest way to do that is with one of these. It's a circuit tester. Um, you've probably seen this before in some of my other electrical videos. If you haven't, I'll put a link in the description below the video and you can check it out for yourself. But they're pretty easy to operate. You just take it, plug it in, and you'll get some lights that will indicate what's going on with the circuit. On the top here and on most of them, there should be some kind of a diagram to tell you what the different lights mean. On this particular model, the two orange lights, the light in the middle, the light off on the right side, indicates that the outlet is wired correctly. So we're off to a good start. Okay, so the next thing we'll want to do is turn the power off to this outlet. If you've got somebody around who can give you a hand for a few minutes and stand here and watch these lights as you turn each circuit off at the circuit panel until they go out, that's great. But if you're working alone like I am today, I've got a little trick for you that'll prevent you from having to walk back and forth and just having to shut every circuit off. So just unplug this, have a radio, use your alarm clock or a radio or anything really that makes noise. Let's plug it in, turn it on. And then what you'll do is you'll be able to, you should be able to hear that at the circuit panel. You can shut each circuit off one at a time until the sound stops. Let's check this guy out for a minute. Yeah, you might recognize him. So I'm going to go downstairs to the circuit panel and we'll listen as that shuts off. Okay, but before we begin here, just a quick little word of caution. This is dangerous. Electricity can injure you. It can kill you if you're not careful. You can start a fire, damage equipment, that sort of thing. So when you're working around a circuit panel like this, if you have any open spots here that don't have a circuit breaker in them, you'll want to put a plug in there. You can get those plugs at the hardware store. And what those do is basically just prevent any kind of accidental contact so you don't accidentally stick your finger in there and shock yourself or have something land in there and create an arc and start a fire or anything like that. So if you're going to be working around electricity, just be careful. Okay, so you probably can't hear that, but I can hear it. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is just shut the circuits off one at a time until I hear the sound stop coming from the stereo. And there we go, it was that one. Now some circuit panels have a diagram that tells you, you know, what the circuits should in theory be. I don't always trust these. I always just do it that way because things change over the years, especially in an older house like this. Okay, so now that we have that circuit shut off, we want to verify that it is in fact off before you start actually working on it. And one way to do that is just one of these. It's a no touch voltage detector. And the way it works is you just turn it on and you put it near 
something that is on a live circuit like this light switch right here. And when you get it near that switch or that outlet that still has a live circuit on it, it will make a noise, make a beeping noise, and a little light inside will flash. So I'll show you how that works. You see that? So you get that noise and you get that visual cue of a little flashing red light to let you know that this is still an active circuit that is on right now. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to go back to the outlet that I'm working on over here and verify that it is in fact off with this since we just verified that this still works. And you always want to do that before you want to test your device on something that you know is on before you trust this. So. Okay, so we have our voltage detector here. We'll just put it next to the outlet and we get nothing. So this outlet is off. We can proceed with taking it apart. Let's go ahead and grab a flathead screwdriver, remove the screw on the faceplate, and we'll just set that off to the side for a minute. Remove the two screws that hold the outlet in place. Over the years, these get painted over so many times, sometimes you gotta kind of pop them loose and just kind of pull it out. Okay, so what we have going on here is this is on a circuit with with other outlets on down the line. So you've got power coming in and you've got power going out next to the next one. So that's why you'll see two black wires and two white wires here. So we basically just want to duplicate this setup. The black wires are going to be hot. The white wires are going to be neutral, and you've got the exposed copper ground wire here. And I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so basically what you'll want to do is just copy what you see here. Now this particular um, outlet, the, the wires are just kind of shoved into a spring-loaded keeper in the back. You can, if you have a small enough screwdriver, Kind of slide them into those little slots to release that. I don't have that on me unless maybe this one might be small enough to reach in there. Nope. So I think what I'm going to do just to save time here is to just cut these off and just restrip back a new section. It's not a bad idea anyway. Just get some kind of new fresh copper make your connections. But basically what you'll want to do is just copy what you see here, keeping in mind that the black wires are hot if it's wired correctly. And you'll want the black wires to go to the gold terminals on the outlet there. I'll just nip these off. And for beginners, the easiest way to do this would be just do one at a time. That's exactly what I'll do here. Oh, one other thing to note too, is there is a strip gauge on the back of these, or most of them have it to tell you approximately how long to strip back the, the copper wire. If you do this enough, you kind of get a general idea. I don't need to use that anymore, but, but it's kind of handy, I guess. So it kind of depends what kind of connectors are available on the outlet you're using. This one is going to make a little loop like that. And so you'll want to put that little hook on uh, the direction you're going to tighten the little screw down. So I'm going to obviously turn it to the right so you want it to kind of go that direction so it doesn't loosen the hook on the little wire here as you tighten the, sc the screw down. See what I mean here in a minute. And you see as you kind of tighten that down, it'll kind of close that loop as you tighten it. So we'll just do the next one and the next one and the next one after that. And we'll be done. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get them in here, but relax screw up a little bit. 
There we go. Now I personally prefer to put them on the terminal like this as opposed to just sliding in that little spring-loaded slot in the back. I don't really personally trust those all that much. But each to their own, I suppose. So, like I mentioned, you got the black hot wires here on the one side. And then we'll just repeat the process using the white neutral wires on the opposite side. And then the ground wire will go down here to the green terminal. idea is you want to strip these long enough so it gets a good wrap around the terminal and let it come off. But like I said, you do enough of these, you kind of kind of get the hang of what it should look like after a while. And finally, our ground wire here. Okay, so at this point, all I really want to do is just make sure these connections are snug, like so. I don't have to go final tight with them just yet. So, then what I'm going to do is take my circuit tester, plug it in, go downstairs, turn the circuit back on, and just verify that we have this thing wired correctly. So as you can see, we have our two orange lights indicating that this is wired correctly. Now we're going to go back downstairs and turn that same circuit off, finish up, and then we're done. Okay, so we're ready to wrap this up. What you want to do now is just kind of give each of these a final tighten down. You have a screwdriver. Make sure they're good and tight. Okay, and then the final thing that I like to do, just uh, one last little safety tip, is take some electrical tape and wrap it around, all the way around, covering all the terminals and the connections. Just for a little added safety, so you don't want to be exposed connections where a possible short could could happen. So do that. And this is always the hardest part, getting all the wires kind of shoved back in there. Um, about the easiest way to do it is to kind of try to pre-bend them a little bit so that as you shove it in they'll kind of collapse down on each other. But that's kind of tricky. Just gotta kind of do your best, get them in there as best you can. That one looked too bad. I 
And on this, I think just snug is good enough because you are most of the time screwing into this plastic here and that could snap if you go too tight. And personal opinion, visibly or visually straight is straight enough. If you have a little torpedo level, you know, in your bag, you can make sure that's perfectly level, but I just, I don't know. Make sure it looks straight to the eye. It does. And get on it straight here. And yeah, so that looks good. Maybe that way just slightly. And Cover plate back on. Same thing here. Just snug. And one thing too, especially if you have fresher paint, if you put these on really tight, they'll end up sticking to the paint that's around it. Um, so sometimes, especially if you've painted very recently, just go snug and maybe even back it off so it's almost slightly loose. You can always come back later and snug it down, but you know, that's not a structural piece there. That's just, just for looks to kind of cover that up. Just as long as it's on there, you're good to go. And that's it. So what we'll do now is do one final test and I'll stick it on the bottom one this time. I'll go run downstairs, turn this thing on, and put the TV back up and uh, do a little relaxing on a Sunday evening. Yeah, we're in business. Wired correctly, top and bottom. And you know what? That's really all there is to it. It's just that simple. And your house is a little bit safer, a little more functional. And I'll see you on the next video. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to DIY The Art of Wood. I'm Jeremy. Today, we're going to be fixing a very common electrical problem that you may even have in your house. It's especially common in older houses, but you can find it in newer houses as well. Oh, wow.